Good evening. My name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. And we are back. Jane and I have been gone on vacation for a couple of weeks. So uh, if you're not from the area and have been watching uh, and noticed that we were not on, that was the reason. But uh, we are back and uh, we're just uh, enjoying the time that we'll have together for this evening service for Sunday, June the 19th. Suffice it to say uh, to all the dads out there, uh, Happy Father's Day. We will sing several songs, observe the Lord's Supper, and I will have a message that I hope will uh, just send us off for the evening uh, in a good frame of mind and give us something to think about. So if you would turn your songbooks, uh, we are singing from Songs of Faith and Praise to number 763, and if you don't have those books, the title of the song is, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee. 763, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee. O oh, Master, let me walk with Thee in lonely paths of service free. Tell me Thy secret, help me bear the strain of toil, the fret of care. Tell me the slow of heart to move by some clear winning word of love. Teach me the way would be to stay and guide them in the homeward way. In hope that sends a shining ray far down the future's running way. In this that only thou canst give with thee, O Master, let me live. Number 136. 136. The title of this song is Love for All. one's been around for a long time. The date in my songbook says 1864. Love for all. Love for all and can it be can I hope it is for me I so long ago, <coughs> straight so far and fell so low. I, the disobedient child, wayward passion had and while I who left my father's home in forbidden ways to roam to my father can I go that is me, myself, 
vile thrall in this house there yet may be place a servant's place for me see my father watching stands see on his hand. God is love, I know, I see. Love for all, yes, even me. For the Lord's Supper, let's turn our books to number 315. That wasn't the song that I wanted. Let me... Three thirty five, I'm sorry, three thirty five in memory of the Savior's love. <clears throat> three thirty five. This is our song before the Lord's Supper. <clears throat> in memory of the Savior's love, we keep the sacred feast. Where every humble, contrite heart is made a welcome guest. By faith in me, the bread of life with which our souls are fed. The cup in token of his blood that was for sinners shed. Beneath his banner thus we sing the wonders of his love. And here anticipate by faith the heavenly peace of At this time, because the scriptures let us know that we should, we gather about the Lord's table in what is commonly called uh, communion. We um, observe uh, the death of uh, Jesus Christ, and uh, we etch that into our memory, which we do every day. But at this one special time on the Lord's day, as Acts chapter 20 and verse 7 said, they gathered together on the first day of the week to break bread. We specifically set a time apart that we will just devote uh, uh, just a small part of our service to uh, remembering uh, the death of our dear Savior, uh, the Savior that died for the sins of the world, the Savior that gave up his body, the Savior that shed his blood, that uh, uh, we may be spiritually fed and that our sins might be forgiven. Uh, let's pray for the bread. Our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that your master plan was so marvelous that at just the right time, 
uh, you sent Jesus to us. We're so blessed that he live a life, lived a life as a physical, humble servant to all. Uh, we're just so grateful that he is our high priest. We're so grateful that he is now ascended to being with you at your right hand. But at this moment, we remember the pain and the agony he suffered as he died on the cross. As we partake of this bread, help us to think of the body that he gave up for each one of us. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Blood to, that courses through our body is the essence of life. It carries to our body, uh, to all parts of the body, the necessary things that allows life to continue. And we again are so blessed that Jesus was willing to shed that blood. And we have such wonderful symbolism here. The symbolism that this is the blood that washes away our sins. And uh, without it, uh, we can never approach your throne. So we're so grateful for that plan and so grateful that Jesus shed his innocent blood. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're, again, uh, as we partake of this fruit of the vine, we think back to the blood that poured from Jesus' head, from his side, from his hands and his feet. As that uh, blood left his body, uh, we know that uh, when enough of it left his body, uh, he was not able to physically function and he, he died uh, a physical death. We're so grateful that he was willing to shed that innocent blood for us and that it is the substitute for our sins and it's through that blood that our sins might be forgiven. Help us to appreciate it more and more each day. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. At this time, because it's convenient, um, we do something else that the Bible tells us that we're supposed to do. And that is that uh, we are to give back to the Lord that which we have laid by in store, that which we have been blessed with, that we give back to the Lord, to his church, as uh, many did in the very first century, that they laid their monies at the apostles' feet. And uh, we do this and we give back to the church so the church can carry on its function. The church that Jesus died for uh, can do its job here on earth, that it can bring others to you, that we can be of aid to those that are in need, just as Jesus was when he uh, walked this earth. So uh, just pray that you would bless us as we give back to you what is rightfully yours. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for uh, the time that we have that we can physically give back to you. Help us to give with gratitude. Help us to give with generosity. Help us to give with an open heart, realizing that all good things come from you. And even though we're living in a world right now where uh, prices of things have escalated for a period of time, we know that uh, all things are yours and all things will come about to good for those of us that love you. Help us to give back openly and willingly. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And our song before the lesson is number 442. 442.
and 42. The title of this song is, I Will Sing of the Mercies of the Lord. Psalm 89 verse 1 tells us, I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth, my mouth will I make known, make known. Thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. With my mouth, my mouth will I make known, make known. Thy faithfulness to all generations. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing, I will sing. I will sing, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. Oh, I enjoyed singing. I know the Lord was praised and uh, I know that as we lifted up our voices, uh, we felt better about ourselves and uh, we felt better uh, about uh, giving the Lord the, the praise and the adoration that he deserves. If you were there this morning, uh, you probably uh, maybe uh, wondered what uh, this lesson was all about. And uh, as we look into our New Testaments, uh, we know that uh, there are men of the New Testament that are, uh, and of the Old Testament, that are mentioned very prominently. We can't speak of the Old Testament without thinking of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. We can't talk about the Old Testament without thinking about Joseph and Moses. Uh, we can't uh, think about the Old Testament without thinking of the prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah and Hosea and Jonah and Obadiah and so forth. And as we move into the New Testament, as the church began, it started with uh, the 12 disciples who uh, became apostles. And so those names are very, very prominent. And so we know of Peter and we know the the books that he wrote, and we know of John and the books that he wrote. We know of James, the brother of Jesus, who wrote the epistle of James. And who can forget the apostle Paul, who wrote the majority of books in the New Testament. And along with Paul, we have uh, some very prominent people. We read about Timothy, and we read about Titus, uh, and we read about Barnabas, and we read about Apollos. Uh, I've mentioned all those names to come up with a name that was only mentioned five times in the New Testament. And so the title of my lesson, and it won't be a very long lesson this evening, will be Be a Tychicus. Now, I hope I pronounce that right. As I look at the word, it's not a word like John or Peter or Paul or even something like uh, Apollo or Barnabas. It, it's a difficult spelling. It's spelled T-Y-C-H-I-C-U-S. And by my way of thinking, that's Tychicus. And his name is mentioned five times. And uh, I'm just going to go through those five times for you uh, to remind you. And if you want to really delve into this lesson, you have a pencil or a pen with you. Uh, if you want to list those places in the 20th chapter of the book of Acts, verses one through four, it says, after the uproar had ceased, and this is while Paul was in Macedonia and Greece, Paul sent for the disciples 
And when he had exhorted them and taken his leave of them, he left to go to Macedonia. When he had gone through those districts and had given them much exhortation, he came to Greece. And there he spent three months. And when a plot was formed against him by the Jews, as he was about to set sail for Syria, he decided to return through Macedonia. And he was accompanied by Sopater of Berea, the son of Pyrrhus, and Aristarchus and Secundus of the Thessalonians, and Gaius of Derby, and Timothy, and Tychicus and Trophimus of Asia. Now, he's not mentioned very prominently here, and he's mentioned with an, a couple of other people who are not on our hit parade of people in uh, the New Testament. If we turn to Ephesians, the sixth chapter, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 21. It says, But that you may know about my circumstances, how I am doing. Tychicus, the beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will make everything known to you. So it looks like he sent uh, this letter along with Tychicus. Colossians chapter 4, verse 7. Colossians chapter 4, verse 7. Now it gets deep. Now we get a little insight into who Tychicus really was. As to all my affairs, Tychicus, our beloved brother, and faithful servant and fellow bond servant in the Lord will bring you information. All right, again, he was sending information. He was sending it with Tychicus, but he modifies who Tychicus was. He says, our, our beloved brother and faithful servant and fellow bond servant of the Lord. And if we look at 2 Timothy chapter 4 <clears throat> and verse 12, it says, But Tychicus I have sent to Ephesus. Uh, if we go back a little bit, it says, Only Luke is with me. Pick up Mark and bring him with you for he is useful to me for service. But Tychicus I have sent to Ephesus. And finally, if we look at the book of Titus, Titus chapter 3 and verse 12. When I sent Artemis or Tychicus to you, make every effort to come to me at Nicopolis, for I have decided to spend the winter here. The, the two scriptures that we really want to zero in on are Ephesians 6.21, but especially Colossians chapter 4, verse 7. It says, Tychicus, our beloved brother and faithful servant and fellow bond servant, in the Lord. Can it get any better than that? I mean, if we give pause, if we give just a little bit of thought to all of this, does it get better than someone like Paul saying that this man is our beloved brother our faithful servant, and our fellow bond servant in the Lord. In all of these references, there's a theme. Tychicus was a messenger, and, and several times it says he, Paul entrusted him 
to send probably letters that we're reading as part of our New Testament, that he sent Tychicus with that. And there's, there's no doubt that Paul knew that 100% that he could trust Tychicus, that he was a servant that he could rely on. Paul knew without a doubt that whatever had to be done as pertaining to the Lord's work, Tychicus would be a servant. Does it say that Tychicus wrote any of the letters of the New Testament? No. Does it say that um, Tychicus was uh, one of the 12, one of the apostles? No. Does it say that Tychicus was a great preacher, that hundreds and hundreds of people came around to hear him preach? No. Tychicus was a beloved brother in Christ. He was a hard-working servant, a man who was faithful to the Lord and faithful to the word of the Lord. And so he kind of gets overlooked in things. He's not a big name like Paul or Peter. But his work and work of people like Tychicus are who helped to keep the church floating in the first century. They did the behind the scenes work. They did the work that, that everybody doesn't look at and say, oh, oh, that Tychicus is so eloquent. Uh, that Tychicus, wow, he's, he's an amazing person. Look at the, Look at all of the things that he's doing. It would seem that he did these simple, very, very important things. And so why does this lesson and why does a person like Tychicus become important to us and worthy enough for me to spend a few moments with you uh, to deliver a lesson to you uh, that hopefully will be valuable. Now, you know what? You may not be a preacher. You may not have a degree in Bible. But let me tell you this. It doesn't take a preacher. It doesn't take someone who has a bachelor's or master's or PhD in religious study to be a servant. Bottom line, what I get out of this is that Tychicus was a servant. And that's so that you might say, well, did you, yeah, Servant's okay, but I want, I want to do something bigger. I got news, brethren. There isn't anything bigger. Jesus put it in frank. Uh, I, I can't, he put it in, in concise terms. He said, I did not come into this world to be served, but to serve. With that, you remember at the table, he washed the disciples' feet. He was trying to show the disciples what service was all about. It wasn't about cleaning dirty feet. It was about humbling yourself to serve others. And I would maintain to you that in today's church, in 2022, we need more servants like Tychicus. We need people who will work behind the scenes and on the 
literally on the front line. Those are the people that kept the church alive in the first century. And I got news. They are the same people that will keep the church alive in 2022. They're the kinds of people that will keep the church alive and well. And so I hope now as you read the scriptures and, and if you haven't already copied them down and want a chance to, I know you've got your Google uh, and I know that you've got your concordance in the back, but they are Acts 20 verses 1 to 4, Ephesians 6, 21, Colossians 4, 7, put a little asterisk by that one, 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 12, and Titus chapter 3 verse 12. My challenge to you and to me is to be more like Tychicus. Be a beloved and faithful servant. Be a fellow bond servant in the Lord with your brothers and sisters. Find a need in your congregation and say, oh, I'll do it. Just as Isaiah said, here I am, Lord, send me. Say to the Lord, here I am, Lord, how can I serve? Be someone in the church that people can rely on to get things done. Be one of those people that are more than sayers, but are doers. It's like that old uh, statement that said, I would rather see a sermon than hear one any time. Be the sermon. Be the truth of the Lord in the way that we serve. Be faithful uh, to God's word. Be a hard worker. Be a servant. Be just like Tychicus was in the first century. His accolades came from uh, no one other than the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul, probably uh, the most well-known of the apostles by way of, of what he wrote. And he's the one that commends Tychicus for being our beloved brother, our faithful servant, and our fellow bondservant in the Lord. And so the gauntlet has been put out. The ball's now in your court. What we have said is, let's see if we can be like Tychicus. Serving is so very, very important. Uh, Christians should be all about serving. Uh, if you have not yet come to the Lord, we invite you to, to come. If you've, if you've read and studied and you know that you need to confess that Jesus is the Son of God, if you know that you have to repent of your former ways, if you know that you must be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins so that you may receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, that invitation is offered to you now. We're just a phone call away. We will help you in any way that we can to come to the Lord. <clears throat> Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, I hope that this message about a humble servant named Tychicus rings true to us and, and rings a bell for us. I pray that it, it means something to us and I pray that, uh, it uh, gives us time to reflect and to know that uh, God needs servants in his kingdom. The church needs servants. It needs people uh, to do things behind the scenes. It needs people that it can rely on for the service of the Lord. I pray that you continue to be with us and bless us 
in all avenues of our life. Help us to be the godly and righteous people that we ought to be. We ask that you would continue to bless us and comfort us when we need that comfort. If we are members of the Northfield Church, help us to look into that bulletin and see the names of the people that are on our prayer list and keep them in our prayers and on our hearts. It is another way that we can serve. Continue to bless us. Forgive us of our sins. I pray this in Jesus' great and humble name. Amen. All of you, please be safe and may God bless you all.